Hello, and welcome to our virtual Money Smart Week Kids Read, a program that brings students and families together in the name of reading and learning about money. So stay home, find a reading buddy in a cozy spot on the couch, sit back and relax, and enjoy this virtual reading and learning activity. In this video, you'll listen to The Berenstein Bears' Trouble with Money by Stan and Jan Berenstein, a book that the American Library Association selected as the 2020 Kids Read Book. We will also have educational activities and discussion questions for you before and after the story. Thousands of books and reading guides were also given to students across the United States. If you are one of those students, now is the time to open them up and follow along. There is more to know about money than just how to spend it. Before we start the story, think about the following key ideas. Keep them in mind as we read and see if you can find the examples of them taking place. First, making decisions. It's important to learn about your options because there are different ways to use money. Your way might not be the same as your brothers, sisters, or parents, or what we see in the book. Second, spending. You need money to buy things and things have different prices. You can only spend money once. After buying something, a person needs more money to buy something else. Third, saving. Some things cost more money than we have at one time, and we must save up until we have enough. When you listen to the story, think about what the characters are saving up for. And fourth, self-control. Although it's tough, sometimes spending and saving means we can't have what we want right away and need to wait. This is an important money lesson in the book and for you as you grow. Now let's read the story. Today, we're reading Berenstein Bears, The Trouble with Money. When little bears spend every nickel and every penny, the trouble with money is they never have any. Brother Bear and Sister Bear knew quite a lot about the ways of bear country. They knew where the most beautiful wildflowers grew. They knew where the wild berries were the thickest and the juiciest. They knew where the best spots were to watch the sunrise and the sunset. They knew where all the best honey trees were. They even knew a very special place where you could almost see a rainbow from a secret space behind a waterfall. But there were some things that they didn't know much about. One of those things brother and sister bear didn't know very well was money. Oh, they knew money was fun to have and even more fun to spend. And whenever they got some as a present or for doing some chores for a neighbor or for no reason other than grizzly gramps who tend to spoil them or from Papa Bear who spoiled them even more, they ran as fast as their legs could carry them to the Bear Country Mall and to spend it. For honeycomb on a stick, a balsa wood glider that did loops, for tiny little mouth organ that only played three notes. They never bought anything sensible, and they hardly ever saved. Once in a while, sister put money in her piggy bank, but she usually shook it out before it had a chance to cool off from her hot little hand. Brother didn't even have a piggy bank. Mama was becoming concerned about the cub's carefree, spendthrift ways with money. I think brother and sister should have a regular allowance, she said one afternoon when her and Papa were working on the family books. An allowance, Papa said, yes, so they can learn to use money sensibly, and to save, and to plan ahead. Oh, no, 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 Papa said. They're way too young for that sort of thing. Let them enjoy themselves. They'll have to worry about money soon enough when they're grown-ups. But it was Papa who first lost his patience with their carelessness with money. It happened one day when the cubs had been seen at the mall spending some pennies a neighbor had given them for walking their dog. That was when they saw the new video game. It was called Astro Bear and it looked so exciting. A video game at the mall? Papa shouted, you must think that I am made of money. Well, the cubs thought of no such thing, and when they pictured 
Papa made of money. They thought that just sounds so strange. Mama could see their puzzled look on their little faces, and she said, that's actually just a figure of speech, my dears. That's when the cubs realized that the situation was pretty serious because Papa Bear only used figures of speech when he was very, very upset. You must think that money grows on trees, he shouted. Video games indeed, he continued, becoming more and more upset. There was no such thing as video games when I was a cub. Why, I didn't even know what money was until I was almost a grown-up, he said. Precisely, my dear, interrupted Mom. And that's why this might be a very good time to start brother and sister on a regular allowance so they can absolutely not, Papa said, knocking over a chair. They must learn how to earn their own money. That's what life is about working, earning money, and saving for a rainy day. The cubs know how really serious the situation must be because Papa used three figures of speech and knocked over a chair. They decided right then and there they needed to mend their ways of spinlessly wasting money. It turned out that the cubs were very good at earning money. Once they set their minds to it, First, they gathered wildflowers for those special places that they knew about. Then they took some of them and made bouquets and sold them on the side of the road. Business was very good. They gathered those fat, juicy berries that they knew and they sold them door to door. Business was very, very good. Brother and sister were turning out to be even better at making money than they had been at spending money. They organized guided tours of Bears Country's finest and most beautiful spots. Sister's piggy bank was jammed full of money. They started a very successful pet mining service. Brother had to borrow Mama's sugar bowl to keep all of the extra money in. At first, Papa was very impressed and pleased. But when the cubs started to sell maps showing the location of all the best honey trees, Papa began to have his doubts. Those honey trees are a family secret, he complained. The cubs don't seem to understand that some of the things are more important than money. They've gone from caring too little about money to now they care too much, he said. Why, just look at them. They're turning into greedy, selfish little misers. So Papa continued. He pointed out how the cubs, who indeed looked more like little greedy misers as they counted their money. Cubs, said Papa in his sternest voice, we're going to have another talk. But before he could start his speech, the cubs took all of the money that they had earned selling flowers and berries and doing chores, mining pets, and selling honey tree maps and dumped all of the money on Papa's lap. Here, Papa, said brother, this is for you. That's right, said sister. We thought if we made some money for you, you wouldn't have to worry about it so much. We hope that this is enough. Papa was so startled and so embarrassed at having been so wrong about them that he was actually speechless. That's very, very generous, said Mom. It's quite a sum of money, and I know Papa appreciates it, but I have a much better idea. Papa does worry about money, of course. Most mamas and papas do from time to time. But what Papa is really worried about is you, she said. He wants to be sure that you understand that there are more to know about money than just how to spend it. You know what I was thinking, said Papa. I think we should start brother and sister on a regular allowance so they can learn to use their money sensibly to save and to plan ahead. An excellent idea, Mom said, as she was smiling, because you recall, that was her idea. What about the money we earned, asked the cubs. You earned it, it's yours, said Mama. What I suggest is that we take it down to the mall and put it in the Bear Country Bank. Great suggestion, said Papa. That money can be used as a nest egg. Oh dear, cried the cubs. Another figure of speech. 
and a very appropriate one, said Mama. She explained that the nest egg is one that the farmer leaves in the nest to hatch another chick. When you put money in the bank, it hatches interest. Interest, asked the cubs. The bank will pay you for leaving the money there. That is called interest. That day, Bear family went to the bank and opened an account for the cubs. It happened that the bank was right next door to the video arcade. Say, that looks interesting, said Papa, as he saw Astro Bear game. Let's give it a try. So the Bear family gave Astro Bear a try. Papa ended with the lowest score. You know, he said, we didn't have a video game when I was a cub. You'll have to give me another chance at this sometime. Any time at all, said brother and sister giving their papa a great big hug. Thank you, Controller Hager. That was a great story. It gives us a lot to talk about, so let's dive in. Let's talk about what happened in the story and see if we can get to the bottom of the Bear family's trouble with money. These questions can help. We encourage you to answer them out loud on your own or with your reading buddy. You can pause the video after each question and take time to answer. At first, where did the Bear Cubs get their money and where did they spend their money? How did Mama and Papa Bear feel about how the Cubs earned and spent their money? What did Papa Bear want the Cubs to learn about money? What did the Bear family do to help the Cubs learn to save money and plan ahead? What other examples of making decisions, spending, saving, and self-control did you see in the story? We've talked about the Berenstein Bears and their money habits. Now, let's talk about your family. Can you think of examples from your own life when you have faced similar situations? Use the following questions to guide you as you think about how these money lessons can apply to your own life. You can pause the video after each question and take time to answer. Does anyone do any jobs that they get paid for? Where do you or your family keep the money you save? What's one thing you or your family would like to save money for? What's a decision you or your family has made about how to use money? You can start practicing good money habits right now. When grown-ups manage their money, they're not always doing complicated math that you haven't learned yet. In fact, a lot of the time, what adults rely on are the same skills they practiced when they were young, like you are now. They learned how to set a goal for something they want and how to take steps forward to reach it a little at a time. They learned to stay focused on the goal and not buy things on impulse when they want to save for something special. Thinking creatively when plans change allows you to adjust your spending to meet your savings goal. And finally, adults use money skills like following through to complete tasks so they can see the plan to the end where the hard work is rewarded. Research at Consumer Financial Protection Bureau shows that most people start to develop these skills at a very young age, around three years old. So it's almost never too early to practice them, or too late. You can get started right now by trying out a few follow-up activities that were inspired by the Berenstein Bears' trouble with money. The following activities are organized based on their recommended age group. There is an activity for ages four and up, ages six and up, and ages eight and up. Feel free to skip forward in the video to get to the activity that applies to you. Our first activity is for ages four and older, and you'll need to have an adult present to help you with the activity. Talk with an adult about jobs you can do around the house. These jobs can be small daily chores or larger projects. Maybe it's setting the table for dinner or clearing up afterward or collecting the mail when it's delivered. Perhaps there are chores you can take on to keep your family healthy, like keeping towels nearby for hand washing or leading short exercise sessions. Not everything you do around the house warrants an award. Often, the good feeling you get from helping your family is more than enough. Next, use the list of jobs you've brainstormed with an adult and work together to select a few on the list that could have rewards. Decide as a family how much each of these jobs is worth. You can use real money or play money. 
or you can develop a different kind of reward system with prizes that are meaningful to you, like a tree or extra TV show. Once you have the final list of jobs and their values ready, it's time to turn them into coupons. A coupon can be a piece of paper or a graphic that shows the job and its value, and any decorations or other things you want to add. Put all of the coupons together in a book using any paper and writing materials you have on hand. Now, as a family, you know what jobs need to be done and how much each job is worth. Going forward, each time you want to earn money or a treat, you can complete a job in the coupon book. As you continue to use this activity, it can help to talk about how you plan to use the money. When you make a decision to spend it or save it, talk it through with an adult and tell them what you're thinking and feeling as you weigh your choices. Here's an activity for students ages six and up. This is a one-time activity instead of an ongoing one, though you might find yourself coming back to this conversation again and again. You remember that in the story, Papa Bear uses figures of speech about money when he was upset. But of course, you can use these expressions even when you're not upset about anything. Have you ever heard someone say, money doesn't grow on trees? Or, I'm not made of money. How about, we're saving for a rainy day? Or, we're building up a nest egg. What do these sayings mean? What other common money sayings or expressions can you think of? If you speak another language besides English, what money expressions are common in that language? Make drawings of some of these expressions. Use paper or your computer. Most importantly, use your creativity. Here's an activity for students ages eight and older. Write down two items you would like to save up for. One item should be an expensive item, while the other is inexpensive. Find out the exact price each item costs and write it down. When you look at the cost of one item compared to the other, think about how the expensive item requires a long-term savings goal and the inexpensive item needs a short-term savings goal. This simply means that the more expensive item will take more time to save enough money to buy. How long would it take to save up for the expensive item if you saved $5 a week? How long would it take to save up for the inexpensive item? What savings habit could you adopt today to help you reach the short or long-term money savings goal? Why is it helpful to have a goal when saving money? Thank you for joining Money Smart Kids Read in this special online edition for 2020. If you are ready to find more books and activities you can use on your own, take a look at Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's Money As You Grow bookshelf at consumerfinance.gov or explore other educational resources at moneysmartweek.org. Learn more about the other organizations that came together to bring you this video by following the links on your screen. Thanks for joining!